Yo, what's up guys? In today's video, I've got my boy Devin Walden featured on this awesome interview podcast. He's going to be going over the four different businesses he manages all by himself. He's doing fix and flip Airbnb real estate. He's doing credit repair. We're going to talk about business credit funding. We're going to talk about him crushing it with the vending machine businesses and the ATM businesses, his credit repair business. It's awesome, man. This guy does it all. <laughs> Excuse us. We got, we're out here in Mexico. Got all the chickens in the background, ocean over there. But it's going to be a great one. We're going to be walking you guys through exactly step by step on how he analyzes deals with Airbnb. So you do not want to miss it out. As usual, this is MTV. The M is for Miggle, Money, Motivation. We out here in Mexico. Let's freaking get it. You Awesome. All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, this is Miggle. This is MTV. I got my boy Devin Walden, absolute killer in the game, serial entrepreneur. I got him featured on today's YouTube slash podcast video. We're going to be going over on how this guy's absolutely killing the game with credit repair. He's in the vending machine business. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, he's in the real estate fix and flip and Airbnb game. And a little bonus for those who stick to the very end, Devin's going to be walking us through his exact numbers, figures, and how he kind of runs everything. So you don't want to miss out on that. But without further ado, let's give it up for my boy, Devin. Welcome to the show, man. How Appreciate are you doing? it, man. Appreciate the intro. Hope all is well with you. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, it's awesome having you, man. Uh, so the way me and this guy met, we were part of a, an awesome program called Credit Stacking. Been using that to leverage for our businesses. Met each other in person, actually, at some business conferences. And now we're finally uh, really starting to connect together. Now we're making content. But yeah, man, what's new with you? I, I hear you're uh, flying out to Japan in like 12 hours. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, man. Japan, I love to travel. I've always wanted to travel. And before I started getting into the credit, uh, credit space, real estate game, anything like that, I never got the chance to travel. Um, about two years ago, I learned how to really leverage my credit, how to uh, credit stack cards to be able to get points. So now flying up to Japan tomorrow for, I think it was like $27 in total. It was just paying the taxes on my flight. So, wait, 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 hold up, wait. So you're going, you're out in Indiana now, right? So you're yeah. flying literally across the world for 27 bucks. 27, like 60 or something like shut that. The, shut the crap up, dude. That's crazy. That, <laughs> okay, I'm sure some people kind of want to know a little bit about that. Why don't you kind of break it down? Um, Big travel guy, <laughs> getting flights across the world for less than a hundred bucks. Like, how, how did you, how, how do you even do that? Yeah, man. So going out to Japan and Guatemala, Guatemala was around the same price. I think it was a little bit more expensive, uh, just the way I booked it. But um, as Miggle told you guys, I'm in the credit uh, space. I'm along or I'm in ATMs along with real estate and vending machines. So all those uh, expenses that I'm buying through each of those businesses, I'm stacking up these points for each different card. And those points you can um, exchange for gift cards, airline, hotel. And so that's how I'm able to travel. Um, so one real estate deal, that'll be able to get me to travel for like half of the year because I'm buying stuff at Home Depot. And you know, it could be like 50, 60, $70,000 for each flip, depending <laughs> the, the quality of the flip, you know? So all those points, um, if I'm instead of going to Home Depot, I'll go to Target or like CVS or something because the points uh, are better. Like uh, you get three X points or something at CVS instead of one and a half somewhere else. So going to Home Depot, I get a bunch of gift cards. So I get more points and then I go to Home Depot and use those. As Yo, that's so uh, smart. So I'm three X in my points everywhere I go and they just add up super, super fast. And that's how I'm able to travel. Almost every trip is under a hundred dollars, either that's flights crazy. or hotels. Yeah. I think you were saying too, you're basically getting a lay down business class all the way from U S to Japan. That's freaking crazy, dude. Good stuff. Yeah, I actually, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I originally booked just regular comfort plus. I didn't want anything super fancy because they were pretty, pretty hefty, uh, 
um, points transfers. And then a couple of weeks went by and they offered me, it was a little over 20,000 points. I think it's 22,000 points to be able to upgrade to that lay flat, which is literally oh, nice. like a bed in a freaking plane, you know? You so that- 15, 16 hour flight, whatever it's going to be, totally literally 20,000 more points. Yeah. It, and it was free, dude. Like you, you got me messed up if you think I'm going to be sitting like 90 degrees for 15 hours, dude. I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> not enough, uh, not enough airplane wine is going to get me to knock out, but if I got it, it's awesome. That's, yeah. that's cool though, dude. I, that's a new take on that. Cause I've never knew about just buying the gift cards. That's so smart. Cause like, for example, like the, the Amex gold card, they give you, I think it's four X points on anything groceries. So you could literally go to a Ralph's Rite Aid or whatever, like any grocery store and just buy like a thousand dollars worth of like gift cards and then use that at the place you're already going to use it anyways and just you know get get so many more points on that that's cool man i'm that's awesome yeah yeah there's multiple different places you know um cbs and walgreens they sometimes limit limit you to i think it's 500 or 750 bucks for gift cards at, at a time you can buy so uh, every 24 hours you can go back or depending, That's dope. <laughs> you know, you have to go to a different place, office depot there. There's just so many different, um, points that are, uh, like two, three X points. You can get yeah. better places. That's cool, man. So I'm actually learning. I thought I already like knew you quite a bit, just, <laughs> just for how long I've known you for, but I didn't even know you were doing the ATM stuff. I thought we were just going to talk about credit repair, vending machines, real estate. Now you're educating me on like, I thought I knew travel hacking. Like I actually just made a video for like free Airbnbs, discounted car rentals, but like now you're educating me on points earning. Tell me a little bit about the Airbnb stuff, man. That's, that's super, ex- or not the Airbnb, the, uh, the ATM stuff. That's, I mean, I had no idea you were doing that too. You're all over the place, man. Yeah. So I'm super new to that. I'm only, uh, this is November, right? So I'm only like three months into it. My brother is the one that mainly does it. So Wait, you I, got a brother? I have six yeah. younger siblings actually. Oh, damn, dude. So you got, you come from a big family. Is everyone like crushing it? I'll have like five different businesses. Like <laughs> you or what? That's so nice. the brother right under me, he's, um, he trains VAs and ISAs to be able to do um, like everything online so he can delegate literally anything to them. And he, cool. you, if you came to him and said, hey, I need somebody to, um, let me think, like schedule my cleanings for my Airbnbs. He trains um, a VA, ISA, whatever you want, you know, $3, $4 an hour um, from the Philippines, perfect English to be able to delegate all that stuff to. So you go to him and say, I need this specific role. He uh, educates them. He's also in uh, drop shipping and Dang, uh, okay. PM business. So I got That's an cool. ATM from him uh, where like he mentored me on the ATM stuff. Uh, it's literally exactly the same as a vending machine. It's less um, like a vending machine. You have to go and sock the stuff. Uh, with the vending machine, yes, you have to stock the cash, but you know, that's all you have to do. You just open up thing, throw in the cash and you're dipping everything uh, gets directly deposited in your bank account. Obviously you um, there's some banks that will not work with like ATMs Um, like chase won't work with ATMs. So you got to go to like uh, a specific bank for wherever you're at um, for them to lend and open up a checking account even. So if I went and opened up a uh, Chase account and didn't tell them it was ATM, they're going to shut that account down 100%. So mm-hmm. you got to just basically get the right bank account um, because a lot of people, it's a risky, risky business. You know what I mean? And really? there's a lot of, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but a lot of banks don't like working with like ATM businesses and cash merchants. Like a lot of banks don't want to lend if you're in the marijuana business. It's the yeah. same kind of thing, you know. So so you're saying more so in terms of the startup getting the funding for it, that's the hard part. But like if I had a Chase like checking account and I went to your ATM, I'd still be able to pull out my money though, right? Or are you just oh, like, oh okay, so gotcha, as gotcha. An ATM I sure. owner, I can't run my business. Uh, my ATM business through like chain. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I have to go to a specific bank to be able to have them merchant my like ATMs, you know, be able to do the 
the cash transactions. You want to go and pull twenty thousand or twenty twenty dollars out from my ATM. You know, it it has my bank has to be able to operate uh, to be able yeah. to have you get the cash out. Interesting, dude. That's cool, man. So you've been doing it for three months. That's awesome too. So anybody watching, hit up this guy for his brother who needs VA stuff because I'm actually. Um, I just hired some people off of Fiverr. I actually just um, let go my recent property managers for my three Airbnbs that I was running just because honestly, it, it I was looking at it, it doesn't take too much work in terms of they're just ha handling all the inquiries. Rarely is anything ever broken, you know, and like they aren't even the ones fixing up damages like or doing the cleans. And I was like, damn, why am I paying 13% on revenue? Like that, that's like over a thousand dollars a month for what, just to shoot some messages. Like most of this stuff is automated. So I went on Fiverr, just hired some people off of Pakistan and it's like 150 bucks per unit. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of training them, but like, had I known you were doing the VA stuff, dude, maybe uh, if it doesn't work out with them, I'll, I'll definitely reach out to you and your brother for the VA services. So that's cool, man. That's yeah, awesome. he's he's killing it over there. I don't know his prices or anything. And obviously, if you need a high level player, the price is probably going to reflect that rather than a low tier uh, person. But yeah, dude, he ha I don't know how many he has working for him. But you know, three, $4 an hour, that's ridiculous. And how yeah. many hours realistically does an Airbnb take? To it doesn't <laughs> properly, you know what I mean? Not that many, especially yeah. two, three, four, five Airbnb listings. Yeah, definitely not worth like a thousand plus dollars every month. Like I can do that stuff myself. It's like, yeah, so that's, that's cool though. So with the ATM stuff, you're, you're pretty brand new to it. Um, I guess this is probably similar with the vending machine stuff, but like, how are you finding the place? Cause I feel like that's the hardest part, right? Whether it's uh, vending machines or the uh, ATM stuff right? It's finding a place where you can put it. And I think being able to find a safe place to put it, because like, whether it's vending machines or ATMs, I don't know, I always see like, those like spray painted um, things, if it's just left out in a, like a sketchy place, like how do you find the right place to do it and finding the right person that's going to let you put it there? Yeah, man. So I live in a condo here in downtown Indianapolis. And for like six months before I started the vending machines, I would wake up or I'm up late at night, 12, two, three in the morning, whatever it may be. And I'm like, dude, I want some freaking Doritos or I want a Twix, whatever it may be. And the closest from me, like gas station is probably like five or six blocks away from me. And mm -hmm. I would have to go down the elevator, walk like a block to uh, the parking garage to get in my car and then go. So I was like, dude, I wonder how many people are in the same position as me. So that's that night. It was like two 30 in the morning. I, um, emailed the, every, uh, apartment complex within like a uh, three block radius of me. And just, just for shits and giggles, uh, they said, or I, I basically said, Hey, um, I've never done vending machines ever before. I said, Hey, my name is Devin Walden. This is my company. Uh, I have, <laughs> I have other vending machines in the area. I was wondering if you guys could possibly like, or would be interested in, uh, having some in your guys's unit. And I sent that out like two or three in the morning, something like that. And then by 9am, I had six freaking apartment complexes saying, yes, we want them right now. What do you have? You have uh, soda machines, snack machines, what do they look like? And I said, Oh, yeah, I have, uh, <laughs> I have soda machines and uh, snack machines. And I was like, dude, okay, crap, I need to I need to get some machines. Like, where do I even get machines? So I had these six places saying, yes, I want them. And I found a distributor near me. Uh, went over to them literally that day. And I was like, okay, I need a snack machine and a vending machine. Only, I only went with two because I was like, I don't know if this is going to make any money, dude. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I talked with my, um, my uh, condo, my apartment place, like the head man or manager, uh, the regional manager came in. He said, yeah, so how long you been doing it for? And uh, how long has your company been open? So I have an LLC. I opened it up just to age it up. And it was a year old a LLC. And I said, oh, I've been doing it about a year now. Um, the a business has been open for a year. And he said, awesome, man. So when can you put it in? And I said, I could probably put it in about next week and a half or so. And uh, he says, all right, uh, how much how much uh, do you want to be charged every month? I basically gave him, I was like, this is incentive for the property, you know? Uh, this is going to bring a lot more guests. This is going to be incentive 
uh, for the guests to either stay or they're going to be walking through and see the vending machines and say, oh, that's awesome. That's something I would like to have when I move in, you know, and uh, they're like, yeah, that's very true. So um, let's just start it off for the first year. Let's not do any payment. And if we think it's necessary, like it's taking too much energy, then we'll start charging. You. I was like, hell yeah. So basically free vending machines location. What do you, what do you uh, mean by um, free? So like th they're not taking any like split on it is what you're saying. No split or anything. No, so that's <laughs> it's a exactly. Yeah. So after three, uh, about three months, um, I was cash flowing on each machine about two to 250 bucks for each machine uh, or the two machines that I had. So after three months, I was like, okay, now I'm actually going to follow up with the other um, uh, apartment complexes. So now I have yeah. six total, um, three different locations, which each machine, uh, right now it's slowing down on the sodas. I'm only getting like 175 bucks for each of them, but the snack machines, dude, I'm doing like two to 275 really depends on the week uh, mm -hmm. for each of Dang, those that's okay. super awesome that's crazy man hell yeah so literally just you kind of like pulled it out your butt was just like oh, yeah, I've been doing this for years <laughs> like real legitimate I mean you're, you didn't lie either like yeah the company's been open for for a year <laughs> that's exactly how I worded it I didn't word it like I've been doing this. I said, yeah, the company has been open for a year, you know, which wasn't yeah. at all, you know, because yeah. it was so <laughs> there you go, uh, dude. Heck yeah. And, and that's I was, cool too. It, it was literally just, this was your problem. It was like, I'm definitely not the only one munching out like late night who needs this right now. So exactly. <laughs> if there's a problem, I'm going to figure out how to fix it. You know what I mean? So that was a problem for, per se, you know, and um, dude, that that's why it's killing it on the street, you know? Yeah, uh, dude good stuff so um <laughs> let, let's talk about just kind of like specific numbers um you know that that's cool you're able to convince them that because I always feel like that's the hardest part is just like you know what what's stopping me to do that but I realized too you know you just got to ask because if you don't ask you'll never know and when I started doing Airbnb arbitrage you know, one of the biggest objections when I'd be talking to people about this, they'd be like, well, what's stopping the owner from wanting to do do exactly what you're pitching them on? It's just like, dude, they don't want to have to deal with it. It, it. It's not that much work, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you do have to do maintenance if something gets messed up and refill it. But like, how's that in terms of the workload? Like, are you are you finding yourself putting in a lot of time and effort once it's set up? Or like, how, how does that go? Uh, so my first location, it, I was new to the whole thing. So I was in there uh, for the first like two or three weeks. I was in there probably uh, five or six hours a week. I was kind of testing what products were good, you know, stuff that I liked wasn't selling or stuff that I thought would do not good was selling amazing. So I had to learn the market, like anything, like with real estate, you got to learn what do people want. And so that's exactly what I did with uh, yeah you know, the vending machines. I looked online, looked at like the pictures, uh, Google vending machines, see what people have in there. And uh, I would try to copy them. And sometimes it didn't work. So once I found like what sold really good, which was um, hot things like hot Cheetos, um, baked hot Cheetos, like sour stuff, uh, sour Skittles, I started mm -hmm. putting a bunch of that stuff. After the first month, everything was, I'm not going to say 100% automated, but it was just like, I knew the expectations on each of the machines. So I would just fill it up, wouldn't go there for a week. And after that week comes, uh, I would go there, just check out, just take a picture real quick, see if I need anything in the machines. If I did fill it up really quick. So uh, my six machines weekly, I'm, I'm like an hour, maybe an hour and a half just to uh, walk down the block and go to each machine and just check out, see if uh, any rows are uh, low That's or anything like that. What's wow. that? That that's once a week. You spend like about an hour. Kind yeah, of not that. even. It's honestly, it takes probably like thirty to forty-five minutes to walk to each of the locations just to and fill them up. You know, because I have them on like a, a trolley or not a trolley, um, dolly. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. But uh, I I would just take my stuff, go take pictures, and if anything needs it, I would load the, the load the dolly up and then walk to the location real quick and fill it up. So that's everything's nice. super, super um, close to me. That's why it takes um, such little time. So 
once a month, uh, every week I collect the cash in the machine. So I just bring it home and once a month I go and deposit everything uh, cash related. So anything credit related on the cards um, goes straight to my bank account every week. Cool. And, and I'm guessing too, the cards or the, the vending machines, because I know a lot of them are, are like digital too. So they'll tell you like it, if something's like starting to run low, right? Or, or you haven't do yeah. that, check it. Okay. So each machine, it has like A1, B2, whatever. So in the app, you can put A1 Hot Cheetos, you loaded seven in there and then Skittles, you know, whatever it may be, you know, and then you can see Skittles sold five this week and you only put six. So you're like, okay, crap, I need to go and put some in there. Um, but that took like two or three months to fully grasp because um, like, it was, it was difficult to um, figure out how it worked because sometimes you would put six in there and it wouldn't read that it went in there or it wouldn't uh, update yeah. fully. And then, so it, it took about two or three months to fully understand how that worked. That's cool, man. Damn. Hell yeah. Um, I guess one thing I, I'm sure a lot of people are probably wondering is just kind of like the specific numbers on it. So like, let, let's just say with one vending machine, you know, what is the cost for it? And just like any expenses associated with it, what are the costs? And you said you're making about, what was it, 250 a week on that? Uh, soda machines are a little bit under that, like 170 area-ish. Yeah, yeah we we'll got like 170. Roughly each machine or snack machine is about two to 250 area. That's just just rough estimate numbers. You know, every yeah. fluctuates, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So about, let's just say on the low end, um for the snack machines it's about 200 bucks a week so you're looking at shoot 800 dollars, maybe a little probably a little bit more sometimes 800 dollars a month how much is the machine itself because i mean you're not having to pay for any electricity right like like or yes yeah. <laughs> so it's literally just the vending machine right so actually one place i pay 25 dollars a month for um uh, electricity because they say we can't we can't put these in here without having to basically cancel out what their bill what the bill will be yeah so, I mean I mean that's uh, fair you, you sell you sell like three bags of hot Cheetos and you're good you're fine exactly dude so there's that one place that charged 25 bucks but you know I make that back in half a week not even so there's different avenues you can go with it. When I was first starting out, I was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go on Facebook marketplace and uh, buy one for 500 uh, to $1,000. I, I saw multiple, multiple on there. And uh, I was like, okay, what's the risk factor behind this? If I buy it in a week or two goes by and it just shuts down, like how, what, that's not going to do any good for me. So I went to this distributor, found the distributor within the first day. Um, and then half a day later I had the machines, but I went to that distributor and I told him my scenario and he suggested to get one from him, uh, refurbished. So it's not old, old looking, it's not brand new. So it's like right in the middle, like a middle-class, uh, vending machine. So each of those, um, all the bells and whistles, the card readers, adding card readers to it, they look like brand new machines. Uh, I think the soda machine was $2,300. And the snack machine was eighteen hundred dollars, so okay. yeah, eighteen, um, and then I think it was twenty twenty three hundred. I think for the soda machine, so was that three forty one hundred bucks or so. And right, they had a credit thing where if I paid five hundred bucks to them, they would um, give me uh, five hundred dollars worth of credit at the store for snacks and machines. So for the first. Oh. Um, uh, thing there they gave me a uh, like a bonus I guess so if I give them a thousand dollars for like a credit towards snacks and stuff it was a five hundred dollar um, bonus they gave me so spent a thousand bucks for snacks and they gave me fifteen hundred bucks so um, right off the get-go the soda machine probably costs um, about three hundred bucks to completely fill and then um, I spent another three fifty for the snacks to start off with and for the snacks you have way extra you know you have boxes and boxes of extra stuff to fill because you're not just going to buy 10 sour gummy worms you know you're yeah, you, yeah. you know with the soda machine it was a you, you can only buy a certain amount of cases so that filled the machine fully up so i would say um if you're going to go the route i did four to five thousand dollars to be on the safe side for two machines to get going 
okay, and I yeah. bought that all on a credit card, you know, and yeah, I, it's probably 0%, <laughs> just 0% like, for uh, yeah. six or six months on that card. I think it was six or eight months. So not super long, but it's already paid back, you know? Yeah, exactly. Cause if you're making about 800 bucks a month, you know, and it's, let's call it $5,000, definitely within like six to eight months, nine months latest, you got your ROI back. You don't have to put any of your money down and not now you just, you have enough money to pay back the bank, what you borrowed. And now anything else after month six or nine is all just profit you get to keep. So that's cool, man. Congrats nice. on that. That's awesome. So that's, man, um, I'm moving to Reno <laughs> um, towards the beginning of next year to get my first like house hack multifamily Airbnb deal that I'm going to, I'm going to basically do what you're similar doing with the uh the real estate fit or you're doing fix and holds the the burr method into airbnb so uh, honestly you're the one who kind of inspired me to to kind of do it but basically i'm i'm copying you i'm gonna do that out to reno but now you got me kind of excited with uh once i get my uh my house hack burr airbnb stuff maybe um thinking about probably getting into vending machines while <laughs> while i just kind of sit tight and let that start to cash flow so that's Thanks, man. Drop. Yeah, of course, man. Just know your market with real estate, you know, know the apartment complex. You don't, you don't want to put um, a vending machine in like a, like a retirement home. You can, but it's not going to, they're not yeah. going to have munchies as much as like, you know, college students are. So exactly. just do your research before that, man. But that's exactly what I'm doing. All the college young students, that's, I'm putting them all in those because, yeah. you know, we're young, we put, we, we're not watching our calories for the most part, all of us, yeah. you know, just eating that's anything. Cool. So yeah, man, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing there. Hell yeah, man. So, I mean, we're already on the topic of like a real estate and Airbnbs. Let's talk about that, man. So I know with you, you've, you've been in the real estate for like how, how many years now? So originally from Cali, I moved out to Indy, uh, Indianapolis, um, two years ago now. So, uh, I've only been doing real estate technically for like about two years. When I first moved to Indianapolis, I was working for a, a one of my mentor's friends at the time, and I kind of started learning a little bit of things from them, um, how to run a property, uh, literally everything with property management. So I was doing property management from them. Uh, I fixed all their systems that was running poorly, and I was like, dude, why can't I just do this myself? So after yeah. <laughs> after like six months of working for them, I stopped working for them, and I started really diving into real estate. So within a month and a half of moving to Indianapolis, I got my first real estate deal. It was a duplex. Uh, I got it on the income I was making. And I had, um, I came out here with $30,000 cash because I sold all my stuff in Cali, moved out here with just two suitcases of clothes. Damn. So you full um, sent it. Tell us about real quick, like, because I know you used to work for freaking Dutch bros. <laughs> I want to hear that story. Man, all right. So we're going past jobs, man. I've always been like an entrepreneur at heart. Um, uh, middle school, I showed up to school one day with uh, Mexican candy spoons, and it was like yeah. a four pack from the store. And uh, I think I got them for like a dollar. And one of my buddies was like, hey, can I have one of those? I was like, no, bro, if you have a dollar, yeah. So I sold one of them for a dollar. And then I was on the bus time and I sold all the rest for a dollar. And then the next day I came back with, you know, double the inventory and it, they just sold, sold, sold. So what I did went to um, this place called Cash and Carry. It's kind of like a Costco for, um, uh, just sellers like that. So I went there, I spent like a hundred bucks and just filled my backpack with a candy and shit. So I started selling candy, selling candy. Then I moved up to ATVs and dirt bikes and lawnmowers, um, you know, seventh to eighth grade area, freshman year, high school, I was doing the, the candy business, chips, soda, Ew. anything you think of man. And then, um, I really started, I got my first car going out of eighth grade. I love working on cars. I've always been a car guy. So I was like, you know what? I love doing these dirt bikes. Why can't I just get a, like a cheap little Honda, put a couple hundred bucks into it and flip it. So I started doing that. Got a couple. That's how I survived all through high school. I've been on my own since I was 14 years old after my parents passed away. And um, I just, that's what was my income. You know, I would pay for yeah. my bill, insurance, everything from, um, this car sales. And in 2019, I sold over a hundred cars. 
excuse me, sold over a hundred cars, uh, just flipping. If it was $500, $2,000 worth of profit or $10,000, I was flipping anything I could get my hands on. I was doing that. Uh, and then I was working at Dutch Bros along <laughs> with a real estate office and enterprise uh, at the airport, Sacramento airport. So I was working three jobs and I canceled out um, enterprise because I was like, I can't do this. I love Dutch Bros so much. And then after <laughs> I stopped the real estate, uh, cause I was cold calling, I hated cold calling. And, uh, what I would do is I had these eight hour shifts at Dutch bros. I freaking love Dutch bros, the culture, all the people there Yeah. and customer satisfaction, uh, how people respond to the thing. Cause when I was growing up, um, I guess I had like, I couldn't read people very well, you know? So that got me like the marketing and how to talk to people and, facial expressions and everything from Dutch bros. So that got me oh, yeah. thinking like, I really need to get into the real estate game because everything's customer uh, based, relationship based to get whatever you want. So uh, slinging beans at Dutch bros and <laughs> on the side, I would go and buy a car. And then after my shift, uh, I would go buy another car and I would work a double sometimes at Dutch bros. So two eight hour shifts. So uh, that second shift, I would hire two of the my Dutch Bros people to go clean the cars while I'm working. When I got off my shift, I would go sell the cars and just repeat the process for like a year in 2019. Damn. So you were busting ass looking at Dutch Bros for fun. Yes. 100%. <laughs> I, 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 That's so freaking dope. That's so funny. I thought it was like, oh, dude, I got to eat. You know, like this is the, like I'm, I'm living this crappy job and like I need to get into real estate to get out of it. But that's so dope though just kind of like the whole back end story is like dude you freaking crush like <laughs> you literally came out the womb just slaying dude that's sick dude good stuff man yeah i was dealt a pretty shitty hand man so i i mean i, I gotta work 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 to get where i want i don't have anybody in my family to be like oh here's some money or you know give me a break or anything so dutch bros i was happy because i didn't really have like a family family and so Dutch Bros felt like that family piece I was missing. So that's a big part while I was working there. And that I just loved all the customers, dude. I didn't, this money was shit. It was like. Yeah, I was about to say, what the hell are you doing slanging <laughs> beans? If you're making 500 to about $10,000 on a car flip. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah. some weeks I would make, you know, eight, six, six to $8,000 on cars. And I think I was making like. 23,000 a year at Dutch Bros. So, you know, a couple of months I made the salary on flipping cars. Yeah. I was literally only there because the the environment, the people, the love, the culture, everything. So um, That's cool. you can't just you can't do that for the rest of your life though, man. So there was a point where um a lot of like my OG Dutch Bros friends started like leaving, going off doing their own things. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I really need to think what I'm gonna do because this isn't long-term, you know what I mean? And even though yeah. I was super happy, um, you got to have change to grow, you know? Uh, I was I, I was stuck. I was happy. I was content, but I wasn't growing. So yeah. um, I was about to close on a fourplex, in, like a four-unit apartment in Sacramento for like half a million dollars, dude. I applied because I was going to get a three and a half percent down, live in one unit, rent the three out, and uh, my mentor at the time, he said, dude, don't do that. What the hell are you doing? That's way too much money for that. And I was like, why? It makes sense. I'm going to cash flow just like a couple hundred bucks every month with the other people uh, staying in it. And I'm living rent free. He's like, no, come to Indy for a weekend and just check it out. So he had, he lived in Cali at the time and he um, invested in real estate in Indy, uh, out of state investor, just bringing in cash flow every month. And I went out here for a weekend and I saw the same exact uh, apartment complex, uh, not like everything, but like it literally um, it looked exactly the same, layout the same, cash flowing better for $203,000. And I was That's like, holy crap, bro. That's freaking ridiculous. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't end up buying it, but like just seeing that, price difference and I was cash flowing more I was like okay I just need to move to Indy man so um I was out here for like four four or five days in Indy went back home put in my two weeks at Dutch Bros and during those two weeks I sold literally everything I owned my car my tools literally everything I had except two suitcases 
And two weeks went by, moved out to Indy, started working on property management, learning the ropes, um, learning the real estate market out here. After yeah. a month, month and a half, got my first d- duplex, like I said. And then after, I think three or four months, I got my first flip. So how I got my first deal is I used that. I put 20% down for a conventional 30-year loan on the duplex, mm-hmm. got it for $105,000, um, and I kept it for a year. And uh, cash flowing, I was cash flowing like eight to 900 bucks a month after my mortgage payment, everything, dude. Wow. Uh, after a year, I um, was like, I need money. I don't know what to do. So I sold it for 205 and I only renovated, put 10 or $15,000 into one side, sold it for 205. Wait, so 15 turns into literally another 100K just from the flip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Literally. And then on top of that, the year's worth of you know, cash flow that you got to keep, right? Yep. And that was paying my Yeesh. expenses, my phone bill, all the stuff like that. So uh, that was amazing to get that uh, return on that property. My second, like real technically flip, it was a single family. It was a two bedroom, one bath. And I converted the attic to a big bedroom. So three bedroom, one bath, bought it for $40,000. That was unheard of. $40,000 in Cali will buy you like a shack out back maybe. I don't think it'll, yeah, it'll buy you a dog house. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it. Oh. Crazy. Dude, that thing, I, d- I did like 95% of the work myself. It took six months because I was working full-time as property manager. And um, after work, I would go and do some renovations because I didn't have money at the time because I just put all the money in my first deal. After uh, about six months, um, I put 25000 into it. So I'm at like 65000 and put it on the market. I sold it. Uh, within the first day of being on the market, only 85,000. So uh, after like holding costs, I made like probably $15,000, but mm. that got, got my teeth just grinding for like, I need more, I need more, like thirsty for more. Yeah. So I was like, how do I, how do I get, what, what am I missing? Like I have some good knowledge on how everything works. What am I missing? And it was money. How do I get money? And I met um, Jack from Credit Stacking, man. Oh, yeah. And he was my first real, like, technically paid mentor where I paid him to, like, teach me my next steps. And uh, Credit Stacking got me able to um, get my third deal. Um, third deal was another single family. I don't remember the numbers on that one, but um, I just, I got 300. Here, here's a stack of my cards, actually. Um, See the flat. Damn. Damn. But that, that's at least what a quarter mil worth of uh funding on there or what yeah it's about three hundred thousand actually so yeah. um, that's, go, dude. So and, I and that's, with, the, that's with like the vending the atm because you you could get the cards with each llc so yeah, yeah. that's freaking awesome dude heck yeah exactly man so uh got the three hundred thousand. uh it took you know better part of probably a year to be able to get that much, you know, with the different businesses and learning the business game. Uh, I went through a lot of different mentors trying to speed up my process because time's money in my head and um, uh, paying for Jack that helped me speed up multiple years of my life, you know? And so I tried to do that with multiple other people, um, just learning different aspects and uh, in my realm and my niche and everything. And a lot of those, um, they were just the gurus, the people advertising, you know, 20, 20,000, 30,000 for a mentorship and they just didn't deliver. So there was a lot yeah. of I would pay and I just didn't get results. And I was like, this is crappy. So, um, a lot of that 300 K went to, uh, just, um, uh, traveling along with, uh, meeting people, uh, mentorships and courses and all that to get to where I am today. Uh, so slowly paying that back, uh, but I've learned so much in such a short amount of time. So hundred percent need to find a mentor and whatever you're looking for, if it's vending machines, um, yes, you can start off slow and learn it. But if I, uh, had somebody to teach me for say 500 bucks, a thousand bucks right off the get go to speed up my process by six months and not make mistakes, I for sure would have spent that, you know, uh, cause you want to get cash flowing as fast as you can, that 500 bucks to a thousand bucks, um, might speed that process up six months or so. So yeah. anytime saved, I'm going to be doing it. Um, I'm doing currently doing a duplex, 
Uh, it was a one bedroom, one bath, got it for 99,000. Uh, in the end, I'll be putting in about 60,000. So just say 160, one, two, three, like 165,000 after a whole holding cost and everything. And uh, added the bedroom and bathroom downstairs. So two bedroom, two bath each side. And it's going to appraise for about 280,000. So like that's that. freaking amazing. Literally like not going to come out of pocket any amount of money. So that's how I'm doing all these deals. Now I was starting off with flipping uh, houses and now I'm doing renovating and turning on to Airbnb. Yeah, that's cool. Well, real quick, before we jump into that, I kind of wanted to just like talk about just, you know, the the importance of those mentorship programs, dude, because I, I, I work for credit stacking and I talk to a bunch of freaking boners sometimes. And, you know, you listen to people talk, they tell you they have this goal, they've been thinking about it forever. They want to like, leave their nine to five job that they, they heard about this hustle. They've been wanting to do it for so long and they hop on these calls. And when they find out that they actually have to put money and put some skin in the game to learn this knowledge, they're like, Oh no, I don't know if I could spend a couple hundred bucks a month to, to like invest in my future. And I'm like, are you serious? Mm-hmm. Like you can't spend $5,000 to get 250 K in funding to change your life. Like you can't spend $300 a month to get into this program. Like, are you kidding me? Like, and it just like drives me insane. And that's how, you know, like a real, so somebody who's serious is have they already invested in themselves, which is awesome. That credit <laughs> backing was the first one for you. And you've actually seen those results, but number two, like if somebody can't invest in themselves, like they are never going to get anywhere in life. You're like, if you want to get into vending machines, that's obviously probably a little easier than real estate. If you make too many, like one or too many mistakes in the beginning with no one having your back to tell you how to do it right, you're not going to finish that project, mm-hmm. you know? And even if you stick with the project, you're going to be leaving a lot of money on the table because you don't know what you don't know. You know, you, you don't know how to improve. And that that's awesome, man. That, that 300K you got in funding, has all gone towards the business, investing in your knowledge and like the travel that comes with having to go meet those people. That's, that's good, man. Good stuff. Uh, I mean, that that's why I got into content empire too, with Ryan Pineda. I was like, dude, I kind of already know a lot of this stuff. I just need to be around like-minded people who are going to support it and kind of help teach me how to make content. That, that's honestly why we're here today is because when we went to, um, Ryan Pineda's Future Flipper Conference. We had Sean Cannell talk about YouTube. YouTube is freaking awesome. The way they described it, I'll never forget it. It's the place where content lives forever versus like, I've seen you on Instagram making some like reels here and there. But the thing with that is like, you gotta be pumping that every single day. And and if somebody's not on Instagram that day, they're not gonna see it. it. It's gone in the abyss of, unlimited content but with youtube if you're dropping value like we're doing right now teaching people about credit repair vending machines real estate like they're gonna want to connect with you and they can always learn whether it's now or five years later that and that's what inspired me to get into this i invested 5k into that content empire um you know that's why we're here right now is like dude i want to talk to some awesome people who know a lot more than i do because i have value on credit but like uh you know, we took the same credit course, but you're teaching me um, stuff on just like point earnings. So that's, yeah, man, that that's awesome. Good stuff. Yes, sir. And when I, my first course, the Jack, Jack's course, credit sacking, man. Um, I've always thought like, yeah, I need to pay somebody to do this, but I was, I didn't have much money that uh, say it was $3,000, whatever the course was. I can't remember that right now, but, uh, I was like, that's my whole bank account right now. Like, how mm-hmm. am I going to ensure this is it? And I kept getting a phone call from somebody from credit sacking. I remember his name and he was trying to sell it to me. And I was like, dude, no, like you sound scammy. Like who the hell is king of debt? Like that just sounds like, no, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that it came down to is the credibility of seeing his content. Who is this guy? I search his name up and he pulls up. And so I've 
that's what I focus a lot of this uh, last year on is trying to build that credibility with people. Uh, I still need to make the the freaking YouTube stuff and, you know, having more testimonials and like giving content to people, um, even if it's something simple that I think that um, uh, like somebody asked me, what's an authorized user yesterday? And I was like, I thought everybody knew what the hell that was. You know what I mean? And yeah. something simple as a 20, 30 second video explaining what that is, is going to be like, oh, wow. You, okay. He knows what the hell he's talking about with credit stuff. You know, uh, just compound those things into YouTube shorts or a uh, yeah. five minute YouTube video, whatever it could be on each, each specific topic. But when I first um, uh, went to Jack's thing, man, it took like three months for me to be like, okay, here's my money. Now teach me what you got to say. So um if you're in a rough spot, I definitely understand um, certain mm -hmm. scenarios, you know what I mean? But sometimes you just got to take the risk and uh, go for it. If I didn't take the risk on a lot of the things I uh, have bought into or the courses or the people or the relationships, whatever it might be, I would not be where I am today, 100%. If I didn't invest that, uh, say $3,000 with Jack, whatever uh, that was, or um, $10,000 with this guy, I would nowhere near be where I am today and with the knowledge I have. So definitely need to um, get the credibility for each person, build your credibility in your niche. And uh, that that will um, bring more opportunity to you. So, uh, so yeah. That's, <laughs> that's cool though. Um, my question too is, so did you, cause I know you have your credit repair company. I've been seeing you post like, dude, th this guy's absolutely crushing it in the credit repair. If you have less than a 700 FICO score, like any derogatories or anything, this guy's the absolute beast. Like I I've been sending him some leads and I've seen, been seeing his results with people and they'll be like a little hesitant to go with him. Like, Oh, I went with Lexington law or all these other people. Like, they literally just took his money, took their money and they go with you. And literally within a couple of weeks, a month, like 60 days where they were promised from another provider. Oh yeah, we'll get that done in 90 days. This guy's getting it done in a matter of weeks or 30 days. So like, I've been seeing you crush it on the, the credit repair side. Talk to us about how that's all, all been going. Was that because you took credit stacking or was that something you were already interested in credit repair like how'd you get started with that i hate credit repair i hate it <laughs> but i'm freaking amazing at it so if i can provide value to somebody if it if i don't like something but i can provide value to something uh or somebody i'm 100 percent gonna do that do that because uh, John Joe over here, uh, he has bad credit. I fix his credit. He's going to tell, uh, Susie Smith, I'm making names of obviously, but, um, that he did well. And then that opportunity might lead back to me and something I may need help with like a real estate deal in the future. Um, they may come back over to me and say, Hey, uh, yeah, I could lend you $20,000. No problem. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know you're credible for it. So yeah, what yeah, got yeah. into the credit repair is somebody opened up 130,000, maybe a little bit more under my name. And I went to probably at least a dozen people, dozen repair companies over the past. Uh, so that would have been 18. So 26, 2016 or no, 2017 to 2019. I was trying to get my credit repair from all these other people. And I was like, Dude, this is not working. Like even stuff simple as inquiries weren't getting removed for me. And I started um, just investing slowly, slowly into it um, and learning it myself. Like what one place would do, what pl the other place would do. The communication was crap. So I just stopped working with everybody and learned it myself. I cleared all the debt off my um, uh, file, completely changed uh, the trajectory trajectory of my life, getting that completely cleared off my name. Um, and like probably a year ago, I started uh, really like looking at other people's and giving them advice. But about six months ago, I really dove into helping people fix their credit. And it started off with um, one of my brother's clients and I got, it was three collections it was like 30 something inquiries and a couple late payments off his file in less than a month. And he said, uh, 
he's gone through multiple, multiple, multiple other people trying to get it off, no luck, or they would only remove a couple inquiries or something. And I got it off so fast. It was like, I was like dumbfounded about myself. I was like, damn, okay. How many other people are in that position? I would want somebody like me, whenever I was looking for it, to be able to um, get the things off as fast as I could. So yeah. I haven't really uh, advertised it, done any ads, nothing like that. It's all been word of mouth. Uh, and that's just been so abundant, people referring um, people over to me because I'm getting so many uh, things done for them in, in such a small amount of time. So uh you know what? Uh, I might do ads soon, but I've been just so uh, caught up into it and helping people. I just want to continue to be able to do that for them. If I can do it good, I'm for sure going to help people out. Well, we'll have to hit up your brother to get some VAs so you can Dude, you handle all the content and all that stuff. We'll get them trained and you know start taking on hundreds of more clients. Do that. And that's the move. And I really, really would love to do that, but I, the thing in the back of my head is saying don't do that. Then you'll become like more um, like company and you won't feel like it's personalized. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I might not get those same results if I expand with other people, or I don't know how those employees um, will treat or how fast they'll work on somebody's file when it's just me and I know everything's done. But yeah. obviously with any business, you can't do everything yourself. You know what I mean? So I just need to get over the fact that I need to spend a couple of weeks and teaching these employees and do monthly or uh, weekly meetings with them and seeing how everything's going. So need to do that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's super exciting. The credit repair stuff too, just like you, like, that's crazy. Cause like, you know, 180 K like debt on your file, that sounds so scary. And it wasn't even you. And it's just like weighing over your head for like three years. Like, you really it kind of going back to your vending machine is like who who else is having this problem? You're like, I, I can solve that. That's cool. Man. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it was like 130. It was like a little bit over the 130, but that's that's a lot of freaking money. That's a whole house, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that's insane, man. That's crazy. Well, uh damn. So I guess one big question I have for you is you are doing ATMs, vending machines. <laughs> credit repair, real estate, like I'm sure you already have probably have planned for what's next, but how are you as one person able to manage that? Like, I understand the vending machines and ATMs probably don't take too much time. Um, I don't know, like for me, I, I have, I suffer really hard with, cause I, cause I also have ADHD. Um, but I suffer really hard from shiny object syndrome. Like when I first started becoming an entrepreneur, it's just like, Oh, drop shipping, Shopify, Facebook, Amazon, Airbnb. And like the thing that I had to do is buckle down is like, I had to tell myself, all right, sit and shut the hell up. Like, look, we're going to focus on one thing and one thing only. And it took me like years to figure that out. And for me this year it was like Airbnb and it, it works the arbitrage model, but now I'm going to go into actually owning the properties. Um, but I was able to focus on that for a full year, kind of. I mean, now I'm kind of divulging into content. So it's like sort of fully focused, but I'm just like baffled because like I can't even I can't even stick to one thing for a full year. Yeah, you got four or five different hustles all going down. Like, how are you able to and, and they're cash flowing? Like, how are you able to how are you doing it? How are you balanced for that, man? That's crazy. I mean, what's the best answer for that? Um, I'm, I suffer from the shiny object syndrome, you know, this past year, what do I got this credit? What do I do with it now? You know, um, I, I try to invest in the, um, the Amazon stuff and I got screwed with that at like 25 K, you know, yeah, yeah. actually for anybody thinking about Amazon, any sort of automation bullshit, Sorry, I, I knew I told myself I wasn't going to curse, but anybody who's thinking about the automation BS, do not do it just because I don't know. I got screwed over too. me and Xavier. We, we split on a, a Amazon store together. Then we we're going to go into Walmart. I know a lot of people got into serious debt because they just went all in on something they didn't have proof of concept for. And honestly, like one it is too good to be true, but whatever. I had to make the mistake to figure that out on my own. They're talking about returns, like, oh, you could quit your job literally 
Just give me 25 uh, You don't have to do anything. Like, first off, it's too good to be true. Second of all, if you're a serious entrepreneur, don't be lazy. All this automation BS stuff is just laziness. People think that they could just throw money at something and, you know, they could quit their jobs. Like, go learn a freaking skill, focus on it, and then leverage that skill to start the business or whatever. But anyone watching this, don't do automation. It's not true. I know there's some <laughs> people out there that have it, but like, it's not worth the gamble. You're, you're talking to two guys you got screwed over by. I know plenty. Yeah, man. And in simple things like that, um, the Facebook, there's a trucking automation, same type yeah. of thing. Uh, I got probably going to be super transparent, probably about a hundred thousand dollars of just gone cash gone really uh, so, so you did the trucking support. automation as well i invested in that that turned <laughs> <laughs> well see now now you're making up for it with all the different you're like all right i got screwed over on five different like <laughs> automation scams now i just i'm just gonna do it myself like own five different businesses <laughs> that's exactly what i did, said to myself i was like you know what screw all these people I want something I can touch, something I can feel. If I screwed up with it, I know why I screwed up. Or if, yeah. or if I bought a house and it doesn't sell or it doesn't produce the cash flow I was wanting, I was like, I know why that happened. You know, it was exactly. my own fault. If I give somebody 20K and they promise something, you know, most of these gurus are just going to screw you over and not give the results that you would expect um, yeah. out of your own self, you know? So, that's exactly what I went. I was like, I need to make up some cash flow. How am I going to survive? Like, and I just buckled down. I spent a couple months and I was like, what do I want to do? And then I was like, make okay, off of, yeah, exactly. And then I was like, fix and flip. Uh, and after I got a couple, I think I've done, I've done three flips. Um, and after that third flip, I said, um, I, well, I need to change something up because you would get the cash. You're like, hell yeah. And they're like, what do I do now? So I, I transitioned into, um, I did a couple of wholesale deals too, but I'm not a huge fan of wholesaling. Um, yes. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not my cup of tea, you know, everybody has, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. And I know, I mean, that's not a huge strength of mine. I could do it if I force myself to, but it's, it's a not lot of cold calling, right? Basically. Just yeah. so annoying. Yeah. It's, and it's not I, I'm not cold calling. I'm not a, I'm not amazing at, I guess you could say, you know? Uh, I would hire somebody to do that or just force myself to do it if I wanted to. But after that, I was like, I need to figure out something. And I bought into another course with a good friend of mine, Tyler, uh, for the Airbnb arbitrage. Cause I was, I was going to say, or yeah, Tyler Bassetti. Oh, cool. uh, oh yeah, man. That's sick. Uh, so I bought into the arbitrage uh, course of one of his first uh, students and uh, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to do arbitrage. And then I was looking at the numbers. I was like, okay, I invest this much, but I'm only getting this much in return. So what can I do to be able to do the same thing, but keep the asset? So I switched my trajectory, found houses that are in um, desirable neighborhoods or desirable spots close to uh, downtown or the main food strip or bar strip, whatever it may be, something close to there. And I found these distressed houses, went to the owners, look, look for those, got those at a good deal, a uh, good amount, renovated them, cash out, refinance, pull all my money back out. And I could have that asset. It's mine. I could put it on Airbnb and I'm cash flowing more than I would have if I went on the arbitrage method. Yeah. So I stopped investing and buying courses and just uh, put the knowledge I knew already in into play. Um yeah with these physical assets I, I could touch. And that's why I started doing the ATM, the vending and the, the, the arbitrage and the credit repair. I know the results because I'm doing it. If, if I don't give the clients results, I'm not one of those guys to be like, ah, go screw yourself. You just gave me a thousand bucks and I didn't do anything to help you. You can go screw yourself or block them. You know, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I have a heart. I'm going to be like, oh, dude, I only got a couple things off. I promised you these things. So here's your money. Here's your refund in full. Or uh, I did like half of it. I couldn't get the rest of that off. So here's your money. I haven't done that yet because I've been having such massive results with getting nice. made. So I'm very thankful for that. But I just can't understand these, these gurus who just take money and don't feel remorse about it. You know? Yeah, no, it's, that's crazy. 
but yeah, dude, that, that that's a good lesson to learn too. Cause I totally feel you. Cause like one, the automation stuff, you're, you're just being lazy and wishful thinking. It's not going to happen. And two, it's just like, exactly what you said like i have no control over this if, mm-hmm. if it screws up i i know why it's it, with airbnb i know what's screwed up and it's my fault and i can fix it but like anything like that even like stocks or crypto or stuff i not even talk bad on that i invest in crypto and stocks too but like i know stuff that isn't tangible that i have control over i'm never going to invest into it just because i want to if something's messed up, I want to be able to fix it. I don't want it to be reliant on anybody else, but that's awesome, man, dude. I, I feel like we we went over so much, dude. That's, that's. Sorry. Yeah, I went on a bunch of different tangents in it as well, you know? No, I, I, I love it. And I'm sure anyone who watches it, I'm sure it's just going to start off as like five people. One of them is going to be me, <laughs> but over time, hopefully people get to check this out um and get to see all this value so like you know we talked about a lot of awesome things we talked about his journey through credit repair the importance of business credit funding we talked about his new venture with atms how he's crushing it with vending machines going into real estate fix and flip love your just kind of like your your hero back end story man like that's fucking crushing it dude <laughs> that's awesome man um I I, I guess before we kind of end things off, one thing just completely unbusiness, not business related, like business aside, what would you say? Like, cause right now you're crushing it, dude. I feel like I was talking to my buddy who who does like Airbnb and real estate. And he was saying like, you know, I feel like I beat the game. You know, I, I don't have to, I'm sure you're probably working a lot um, with all your different businesses, but that's good. But he was saying like, you know, I got a business, it's cash flowing well, you know, I know I'm, ne- I'm never going to go hungry. Like besides the business, what, what is your next kind of like life goals, um, that you want to achieve? What are my next life goals? Um, I wanna... you want to provide to the world, I guess. I don't know. You're doing a lot. So yeah, man. So, um, ATMs along with vending machines, I don't want to, I don't want to have a hundred vending machines. I don't want to have 50 ATMs. That's not my end goal. I don't want to uh, have to either hire people to go put money or stock my machine. So uh, this is kind of like a temporary thing. You know what I mean? So um, in the next year, maybe maybe two, two or three years, I'll, um, I'll sell that as like a business or mm-hmm. if I have like 10 vending machines. I might sell that to somebody, you know, for, um, cause it's profiting. I might do that. Same thing with the vending machines. Um, but my end goal is to have, uh, Airbnbs and all the desirable locations that I like, like Costa Rica. I freaking love Costa Rica. I want to Airbnb there, Airbnb it out. And, uh, Hey, Miguel, I'm, I'm bored, man. Let's go to Costa Rica for the yeah. weekend. <laughs> freaking Airbnb, I'm, I'm we don't have to Airbnb. Pay, you know? So that's my end goal, man. In the next five, 10 years, I want to be able to have Airbnbs and all the spots I love to travel and be able to (laughs) be able to give a safe, awesome, fun experience to people who are traveling. Um, If I want to, if, if I want to go somewhere, I want to have an amazing experience. So I want to give that same feeling, same home, awesome party, cool feeling to people when they travel. So uh, be able to have these short-term rentals everywhere uh, is main goal. I want to get into apartment complexes hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just, I'm just learning the systems now. I'm still green. I'm still new uh, at it. I've only been in the game for a couple of years. You know, I have a lot to learn. A lot of people I haven't met yet. A lot of uh, mentors that I don't even know of yet. So uh, just, I want to meet as many people as I can provide as much value in any aspect of my life. Um, Cause me in five years, the person I am today, I want to meet that person, you know? So I want to be able to, yeah. five years from now, I want to be able to come to people like me uh, and say, hey, this is what I suggest, this is what you should do. Um, mm-hmm. So just continue to do what I'm doing, you know, um, yeah. build relationships everywhere I go. That's awesome, dude. I really like the um, the vacation aspect of it. Uh, it's funny that you say that. It's literally totally aligned on that. Like for me, my goal is to be able to like one, be able to give back to my family. And, but the biggest thing I see that vehicle in order to get to that destination 
is through real estate doing Airbnbs because exactly like I want something in uh, Puerto Rico because that's part of the U.S. So it'll be easier to get like loans and stuff. But I just, like that's what I want to do is get a bunch of little Airbnbs that I own all around the U.S. the the country so I could take them out. And it's funny that you say that because this is literally this is like a little MTV. This is like my um Airbnb that I'm partnered out in here in Chicago. It's like on that. It's like a uh, like right below it's in such a nice area it's like the rodeo drive of chicago there's like a gucci store and prada store so it's like that's how you know like the area is like super nice and the place is uh well kept so that's cool man i'm, I'm glad we're, we're kind of aligned on that i guess to kind of wrap things up man um you know you, you provided a lot of value i definitely want people to reach out if you're open to it what work in these anyone viewing this uh find you uh man i'm on facebook instagram linkedin but um if you follow me on instagram i post some uh, most of my content there any questions you can definitely find me at devin walden underscore um you can link it in the bio or whatever you want to do put it on the screen but yeah man um i'm not going to throw my number out but that's yeah. basically <laughs> Oh, that's cool. basically where my number is Instagram. You know, I respond to DMs fairly quick at the end of the day where I'm laying down. I spend a couple minutes on there and um, just try to respond to everybody. I can any questions that people may have um, to be able to give them their, their answers and solutions to their problems. So yeah, uh, definitely do that. But a couple things before this ends, um, find yourself a mentor speed up the game hundred percent that's a that's my my goals Re, uh, build relationships anywhere everywhere you might go um you never know when somebody that you talk to i just met some dude at home people last week and uh he said he wants to get into investing with me this year uh, and he's wow. a specialist you know you you never know what that nice conversation or hi hello how are you today might do so always be just be yourself be true um don't be a dickhead uh so excuse me but uh, <laughs> oh, no, you're good, dude. we're already past that fuck it <laughs> we're cussing up a storm on this fuck shit bitch we out here <laughs> but yeah man just build relationships everywhere you go don't be afraid to invest in yourself uh take risks uh in invest in courses to speed up the time frame. Uh, don't be scared. Don't be a brokey. Yeah. There you go, dude. I love it. So you guys heard it here. Thank you guys so much for sticking out to the very end. Give it up for my boy, Devin Walden for dropping some absolute knowledge bombs. This is MTV. The M is for Miggle Money Motivation. And give us a follow, like, and subscribe. If you guys got any questions, post it down in the comments below. Hit up my boy, Devin Walden underscore, right? Yes, on sir. Instagram. Um, I know there's some fake accounts of both of us. We are not going to try to ask you for your credit card or sell you a crypto course. So be smart, be kind, stay beautiful. Much love. And we will see you next time. Peace. Boom. All right.